we're in a series entitled Holy Spirit, and uh, I just felt led to start the year, we just need more of the Holy Spirit. Um, and we're believing for your life, for your family, um, and for our church that we would experience freedom this year in the Lord in every area of our life. And so to have that, we need the Holy Spirit, amen? amen. And so I wanna preach a message today entitled Make Room. And uh, I wanna give a backdrop with John the Baptist, and then I'm gonna share five things the Bible says we can do, really, I would say, against the Holy Spirit. And then I wanna highlight that because then if we are aware of that, we can avoid it, and then we can make room and have more of Jesus, amen? But Father, I thank you so much today for this great moment in this room and online. I thank you, Lord, that you would keep us safe in and, and this moment and to go about our week. And Lord, I pray right now that everyone would willingly lay down their resistance, set aside their distraction, and lean in for a few moments and receive something from you today. May your kingdom come and your will be done and your glory be revealed. Jesus, we need you, we want you, our heart is yours. Amen. Amen. Uh, how many like Chick-fil-A Jesus chicken? Come on now, Jesus chicken. Closed on Sunday, it's my Chick-fil-A. Anyway, how many know that um, Chick-fil-A is not right because their lemonade is like addicting? How you know what I'm talking about, that lemonade? This is their largest cup and could be bigger if they wanted to. If you get this lemonade and you drink it, you're gonna be full of sugar. It's gonna taste amazing, amen? <laughs> I don't know why I said amen to that, but anyway, it's gonna be amazing. But the point is, I've noticed something when I go there. Um, I ask for my drink, and they pack it full of ice. And when they do that, they're taking away the room that the cup has for more of lemonade. And I get ticked off because in two gulps, my lemonade's gone. <laughs> and it's full of ice. And so now I've learned when I order to say light ice or no ice, just give me the straight lemonade. Come on, somebody. Right? But I'm not preaching about Chick-fil-A today during the fast, which is amazing. I'm preaching on make room because this is a connection to our life. Now, stay with me today as I use ice as an analogy. Just please stay with me on this. But if our life is like a cup, it's easy for us to be full of ice, which can take up the room that the water of the Holy Spirit wants to uh, fill us up in. Now, Jesus compared the Holy Spirit to water. In John chapter seven, Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Obviously, out of our belly is not flowing water. Out of our mouth, physically, spiritually speaking, that's what he's talking about. So the Holy Spirit in all the Bible, one of the analogies or symbolisms of the Holy Spirit is water. And if our lives are packed with ice, it's taking away. I know ice is, you know, is water frozen, I get it. But again, just, just, just come somewhere with me today. If our cup is full of ice, it's taking room where the water of the Holy Spirit wants to be. And so I want you to see this in John chapter three, if you have your Bibles, verses 26 through 30. I just wanna read this and then get into this today. This is about John the Baptist. The Bible says, so John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one you identified as the Messiah is also baptizing people and everybody is going to him instead of coming to us. Notice insecurity, competition right there. John replied, no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you I'm not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride, and the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled. Notice this language. I am filled with joy at his success. Here's our theme verse. He must become greater and greater, and I must become Less and less. Now, I want you to see, uh, see and think about the context of this passage. John the Baptist is famous. He's preaching, and God's using him. Uh, he has a platform. He's preparing the way for Christ. 
Christ comes. John baptizes his cousin, Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes on Christ. And later, John would be arrested for speaking truth and, and then ultimately beheaded. And John is honored in Scripture. Jesus honors his cousin, John the Baptist, as a great man who helped the kingdom move forward. And at, its high, at, at his height, he says, I need to become less and less. Physically, I need to go away. I need to shrink back. I need to get off the stage, and I need to let Jesus become greater and greater because he's the Messiah. So physically, that's what John did. He, 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 he uh, took steps back, and he stepped off his platform, and he let Jesus, so to speak, take over. For us today, we can get a, a mirror of this for ourselves in that Jesus isn't asking us physically to become less and less. I think he's asking us internally, with the things of our life and what's happening to become less and less so that he can become greater and greater in our lives. It's almost like if this platform was the platform of our life, the platform of our marriage, the platform maybe of our singleness, the platform of our finances, the platform of our mental health, our thought life, the platform of our relationships. I, I mentioned those four things. I could mention a thousand, but those four things I mentioned today because since the pandemic, those have really been heightened with tension and struggle and fear. And so if I'm on the platform of, of those things in my life, it's like you and I willingly, I'm center stage in my own life, but then making room and stepping to the side and letting Jesus take center stage of our marriage. Let Jesus take center stage of us being single. Let Jesus take center stage of our thought life. Let Jesus take center stage of all our relationships let Jesus take center stage with our finances. Let Jesus just take center stage. We become less, he becomes more. When we make room, easier said than done, but when we make room, God things begin to happen. And part of the fasting that we're doing is giving God a chance to make room. And so I wanna encourage you today that when you and I make room, something happens. John stood... He, he went off the stage. Jesus came on the stage. This weekend, we're celebrating one of my heroes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who in a similar, amen to that, who wasn't, who wasn't a perfect man and had a lot of flaws and, and, and issues. But in a similar sense to John, he, he, the effort was this, of, the, of the civil rights of African Americans in our country which was way behind, and, 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 and all that should have been done you know, from the get-go. So it was you know, long overdue. And he, he willingly, in, in a sense, he was the center of it, but then he stepped aside and gave himself for it, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And, and the movement went on, and all his dreams happened in terms of what he, he knew at that time. Now, we're not completed yet. We got work and a ways to go. But, but what he did, he, he was there and then he stepped aside and he was a part of something bigger than himself. And the movement of that is profound. We can learn today to step aside, let Jesus take center stage and let him have our life because you think about ice. The Holy Spirit heals our life. The ice of our life hardens us. The Holy Spirit gives life. Ice in our life can give death. Ice can represent so many things. Greed, lust, anger, strife, drama, lying, unforget, you know, on and on it goes. Holy Spirit gives progress. The ice of our life makes us stuck. Holy Spirit does what we can't do. Ice highlights our limitations and keeps us in them. Holy Spirit gives us new beginnings. The ice of our life fuels, unforgiveness, strife, bitterness, being offended, blaming, and so forth. And you and I are, are very susceptible. I've done it, I'm sure maybe all of us have, that at some moment in our life, we've taken, because of whatever reason, and we begin to fill the cup of our life with ice and sought to be filled with other things other than God. And this is a common theme around the world. And we can fill our cup with other things but the Holy Spirit wants to fill our cup with the water of the word and the water of him. And so in this series of the Holy Spirit, I just want you to know that at City Church, uh, the Holy Spirit is not an it, 
he is a he, and he's, he's a part of the Trinity, and the Holy Spirit is here. And when Jesus ascended from the Mount of Olives in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter two, the Holy Spirit came and filled 120 people, and he's never left. And when you and I receive Jesus, now if you don't know Jesus, receive him today, but when you and I receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in us, and now we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I know in our church, we have 45 nationalities and literally almost every Christian denominational background. And I know that people have been taught about the Holy Spirit. Some people have never heard about the Holy Spirit. Some churches don't even mention the Holy Spirit. Some churches are afraid of the Holy Spirit. Some people think he's weird, he's spooky, he's great, he's this, he's that. I just wanna let you know the Holy Spirit is not weird. People are. The Holy Spirit is not spooky. People are. The Holy Spirit is not, the Holy Spirit is our friend and the Holy Spirit is here, and we are going to be a spirit, a Holy Spirit-filled church because that's what we need, that's what people need. It's Holy Spirit move in us. We can do better than that. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise. The Holy Spirit wants to move. Now, here, here's what's sad. We've taken the Holy, in, in, in church context, we've taken the Holy Spirit and based on different beliefs from different groups, the Holy Spirit is set, has been segmented to corners of the body of Christ and it's caused division and people have camps based on different belief systems around the Holy Spirit. And we have a certain belief here and we will teach that. And if you don't know what the Bible says, we wanna help you grow in the Bible and knowledge. And we have groups that help do that for you. But I want you to understand my heart and my spirit. I'm never gonna debate the Holy Spirit because it's a waste of time. People need the touch of the Holy Spirit, not a debate about the Holy Spirit. And we're involved in helping victims of sex trafficking. We're involved in rescuing kids out of sex trafficking. We are involved in different things locally and around the world and, and those dealing with addiction and different things, people dealing with real issues in marriage and life, and sitting down across the table from somebody who's dealing with something like that, they don't care about our debate on the Holy Spirit. They want to know that God is real, and that God can do something, and that God can heal us, and that God can touch them and do something great, and I'm here to tell you God can do it. Make room for the Holy Spirit. Come on, make room for the Holy Spirit. And so... What are, so, so we can add ice, John the Baptist, we can add ice to our lives, we can really add ice against the Holy Spirit, just for the sake of the message, for the sake of, of this analogy here, this prop, but, but John the Baptist was on stage, he stepped off and he let Jesus become greater and he became less. I believe today, make room that, that you and I would just let God have his way and that we would let God take center stage and that you and I would become less and he would become more. Now, here's a definition we have at City Church, and we're gonna do these five things. Pride makes excuses. Humility makes adjustments. As I go through these, what areas of our lives are we making excuses in? And then what areas is the Holy Spirit saying make adjustments? Four big ones since the pandemic. Marriage slash family and living single, if that's the case. Thought life, mental health. Relationships of all kinds, friends, coworkers, social media relationships, political, all that, and finances. Those four things are tense. And so when you think about that, what, what are we making excuses? Are we letting the Holy Spirit come through? And, um, Here's five things. Maybe take these down. You know, maybe take some notes today. I want to just, this is biblical. Of course, we do this every week. Preach right from the scriptures. Make it very simple to understand and then to apply. The first thing the Bible says, you and I have the ability to quench the Holy Spirit. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. You and I can quench the Holy Spirit. Just think about it this way. The water of the Spirit of God's trying to move into our lives, our family, marriage, single. Again, these four areas, mental health, relationships, finances. He's trying to move in our lives. That water of heaven is trying to get to us, and it's almost like, just for analogy of my hand, we would take our hand and we would just quench it. We would, nope, 
we would squeeze the hose that the Holy Spirit, for example, is trying to get, we would just say, no, you can't do that. I'm not gonna, I, I, don't, I don't want that, or I'm afraid of that, I don't understand that, and so I'm gonna quench the Spirit. The Bible says, do not quench the Spirit, but it's possible for us to quench the Spirit. I've quenched the Spirit. Never forget one day I was in the old, old, this is like 15, 18 years ago, I was, um, I was at the church working, went to lunch, came back, had leftover food, I had some breadsticks and a couple pieces of pizza from my lunch, and I pulled it to the old uh, building, and there was a car there, and there was a young lady in the car by herself in the passenger seat, and I pulled up, I don't understand this, all I know is I felt an impression from God to give her my food. Now, I hadn't really ate off that food, it was clean and, and healthy, come on, didn't double dip off of it. And, um, but I talked myself out of it. I wanted it. And I was stuffed, but I wanted it. And so I said, no, that's weird. She would think I'm strange, and so I'm not gonna do it. And so I you know, got my food, you know, went into the building. And what I didn't know is that that same time I walked into the building, an older lady walked out of the building, and that was her mother. And I went up to Pastor Chad. I said, Pastor Chad, you know, you know is everything okay? He said, yeah, there was just, they were just asking, they needed food. See, my fear, my selfishness of wanting more to eat, my whatever, quenched the spirit in that moment. Now, I've experienced the feeling of quenching the spirit, then I've also experienced the feeling of releasing the Holy Spirit, and it feels a lot better to let him flow. And so, when we quench the spirit, what we're doing is we're adding ice to the cup of our life. Remember, he wants to be living water, but we're filling it with ice when we quench the spirit. The second thing we can do is that you and I, the Bible says, can resist the Holy Spirit. This is found in Acts chapter seven, verse 51, where Stephen was preaching before he was killed, and he said, you resist the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, just imagine the Holy Spirit, for example, coming to your life or, or coming to our house, and he's knocking on the door. I wanna come into your marriage. I wanna come into your family. I wanna come into your singleness. I wanna come into your thought life. I wanna help you with your thoughts. I wanna help you with your relationships. I wanna help you with your finances. Come on, let me in, let me in. And we're on the other side of the door doing this. Don't come in here. Can't touch this. You're not having this part of me. We're literally, just get that image, I'm resisting the Holy Spirit coming into my world in a way that he wants to. But the Bible says we can do this. So we can quench the Spirit, we can resist the Holy Spirit, and block him, and all this, when we quench, when we, and when I hold the door shut, and, and, and just hold, I, I'm just filling my cup with ice, and some water can get to me, but I'm not really getting filled up like I could, because I'm filling my cup up with other things. And this is the Holy Spirit wants to move in us and through us. We've relegated the Holy Spirit to denominational teachings and doctrines and belief systems, which are important to have again. But, but, but man, what do we, but okay, you believe this or believe that, but are you quenching the Spirit? Are we resisting the Spirit? Let's go to the third one. The Bible says in Isaiah 63, verse 10, you and I can vex, you and I have the ability to vex the Spirit. We can vex the Holy Spirit. This is an analogy of, so we have, you know, we have us quenching the Spirit, we have us resisting the, you know, the knock of the Holy Spirit on, on our life. This, the vex of the Spirit is like, I'm walking toward the edge of this platform, and, and this could be the edge, you know, the cliff of you know, our life in a lot of different areas, and God's saying, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, and like, no, I wanna do that, don't do that, I'm gonna do it. Let me have your life, no, I'm gonna have my life. Stop, no, stop, no. It's like we just keep going against, going against, and we're vexing the spirit. And then we fall off the cliff. The, the, the book of Proverbs, man, has an, has an amazing verse. It says people mess up their own lives and then blame God for it. Yeah. So I wanna encourage us, the vexing of the spirit is us resisting God. He's, he's, he's leading us, or he's maybe our, our conviction knows this is wrong or this is wrong. And we're just, and we keep going against what we feel is right from God. That's vexing the Holy Spirit, and that's that's filling our cup with ice. And He wants us to be full of water. This fourth one, I know I've done this fourth one so many times. It's 
ain't funny. But this is grieve the Holy Spirit. This is Ephesians chapter four, verse 30. The context of this, grieve the Holy Spirit, in the, in the context of the verse, it's grieving him through uh, uh, wrath, bitterness, anger, outburst of wrath, cursing, lying, all types of things. So really, it's talking about behavior and then our words. And just think about this. You and I can hurt the feelings of the Holy Spirit. I know we don't think of it that way, but all of our feelings have been hurt, right? I mean, remember uh, the story when I was singing one day to the Lord and, 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 uh, and, and, and Summer said, you can't sing. I said, woman, what did you just say? And by the way, since the fast has started, how many have gotten into a little bit of agitation or a little bit of arguments with somebody? Anybody? Any married couples got into an argument before? Since the fast? Uh, we have. It was Summer's fault. The point is, <laughs> but she, she, the Lord forgave her, and I'm, I'm here preaching the gospel today in spirit and in truth. <laughs> God's working on me, folks. But anyway, what am I talking about? Reading the spirit. We've all had our feelings hurt, and so she told me, you can't sing. I said, yes, I can. She said, no, you can't. I said, Mom, <laughs> I was in your choir. Can I sing? No, you can't. <laughs> Both of you shut up. My feelings got hurt. All of us have had our feelings hurt, seriously or not. All of us had our, ha have had our feelings hurt. I want you to think about you and I can hurt the holy, feel or, or the holy feelings. We can hurt the feelings of the Holy Spirit by grieving him in this area. Again, just packing on ice, filling our cup with, with, with stuff that, 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 that is, maybe we mean well, maybe we don't, but, but we're just filling it up and we're hurting ourselves and the water of heaven is trying to get to us, but man, we're overflowed. And, and, and water can come in this cup, but, but it's not gonna fill it up. So maybe half full. It's funny, you know, the book of Hosea talks about half full. The book of Hosea says that some of my people are half baked. <laughs> if you didn't do drugs, you don't understand that. So the point is, um, <laughs> he wasn't talking about that in the scripture, but some people are really nervous right now. Everyone, I, I've been set free many years ago. Right? The baby likes it, but we can be, we can be, we can <laughs> stay focused. We can grieve the Holy Spirit and we can be full of the wrong thing. And God's trying to get to us, but we're filled up with ice. And so we're talking about making room today. Now the fifth one I've, I've included in this because the Bible says it, you know, uh, the Bible says it, <clears throat> and it's in Matthew chapter 12, verses 31, and that's to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, which Jesus said that sin is not forgiven. If you're in this room, you're watching online, and you have any type of conviction, or any concern that you do not want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you have not blasphemed the Holy Spirit. To blaspheme the Holy Spirit is to be totally cut off from God's grace, God's mercy. This is, this is all in the scripture. I'm not making this up. It's a, it's a total cutting away of what God is trying to do or reaching, and people can do that. People don't start there, people end up there. They don't start off blaspheming him, they end up doing that. And um, I would say, you know, people have asked me over the years, have I blasphemed, I'm, you know, I'm concerned I've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. No, if you had any concern in your heart that you did, that tells me you didn't, because if you did, you wouldn't even care. You'd be cut off, You'd be, your conscience would be seared as with an iron. You'd be cold and calloused and had no thought about it. So, but that is the fifth thing, and those are five things we can do as people against the Holy Spirit. So let me just present this to you. God is sovereign, God can do what he wants, but you and I have a choice in the matter. There is free will because all of us can do this against the Spirit. God doesn't will that, but we can do it anyway. There's a part where, you know, we're not robots. We're, we have a part to play in what God is doing. We have a part to play in our cup being full of ice, or making room 
getting the ice out of our life so that the Holy Spirit water can really fill us up. Now, what's interesting is if I kept on preaching for a long time, this would begin to melt, this would begin to go away, and you could say, well, see, that analogy doesn't work, but actually it does because that's the very point. We're filling ourselves up with ice that doesn't satisfy and it does go away, and then when we get empty again, we fill ourselves up again with the wrong stuff. But when you and I have the water of the Holy Spirit, we will be satisfied and never thirst again. And we can have a filling up of God's Spirit in our life. Isn't that what he told the lady at the well in John? He said, this water I give, when you drink it, you will never thirst again. So even though this ice would melt and it would make room, the truth is, is that we're tempted to fill ourselves up with stuff that won't stay, it will go away, and it won't last and then we'll be empty again, and then our temptation is to keep chugging away and just more ice and just more stuff. I just wanna get more. I'm just gonna keep doing it. And in the meantime, we are potentially quenching the spirit, resisting the, you know, quenching, resisting. We're vexing the spirit. We're grieving the spirit. We're, 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 and yet he wants to move in our life. And so I'm talking about making room. John the Baptist made room. He, he stepped aside and he let Jesus become greater. I love that verse. I must become less and he must become more. I would present to you and I today that in our marriages, family, singleness, Jesus can be more and we can be less. In our thought life, Jesus can be more, we can be less. In our relationships, Jesus can be more and we can be less. And the whole thing about finances, Jesus can be more and we can be less. And when he's greater, we're better. When we're greater, maybe not. And so our job is to make room for God to move. How do we make room? How do we do this? And I thought about Dr. King yesterday. If my voice is a little raspy, I coached yesterday. We won. Come on, somebody. Yes. And... I was with, um, I'm coaching my youngest son's team, and uh, on the way home, he had an hour's drive there and back, and so on the way back, my son Zayden was asking me about Dr. Martin Luther King. And so when I could, I just pulled up his last speech, April 3rd, in Memphis. And I love the part at the very end, his famous, I've been to the mountaintop. And I saw my son process that and watch that. I want you to think of John the Baptist in his glory and in his purpose saying, okay, I'm stepping aside. I'm letting Jesus take the stage. And then I want you to think about Dr. King and that speech at the end. It's a phenomenal speech, by the way. It's about 45 minutes. And in the very end, he says, I want to live a long life. Longevity has its place. Uh, but I'm not worried about that now. I've been to the mountaintop. And I've seen, and then he said, I just want to do God's will. And he said, I've seen the mountaintop and I've seen the other side. And we as a people are going to get to the promised land. And he said, I may not get there with you. But we as a people will get to the promised land. And then he said, I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the coming of the, of the glory of the Lord. And he walks off. And the next day, he was shot and killed. When you think about the context of that, and his willingness, he, 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 he sensed it was coming. He even wrote a letter about what he wanted to be said about him at his funeral. And he was willing to do it. And the movement went on. Today, I can marry Summer because of civil rights. Before, she and I were illegal. And she said that she wanted to marry a white guy. He had to be bald. So, I mean, here I am, you know? <laughs> and our kids, you know? For us today, less dramatic, out on the national scene, than our own home. Again, marriage, family, singleness, thought life, relationships, finances, and probably list another thousand things. 
center stage? Will we be content and courageous enough to say, Jesus, I step aside. You lead. I want to take the ice of my life and get it out of me. I want to make room for the Holy Spirit to move. I want to make room for God to move. Now, how do we make room? I want to end the message with how. How do I make room? The fast that we're doing, just in, by nature, prayer and fasting, helps make room for God. It gives something up. Some people are giving up radio, television, food, social media, whatever you feel led to do. I would do something that you feel or, or that, I would, that, that, that stings a little bit. And, and, and when you give that up for a time, you're setting that aside. You're naturally giving something up to be filled up instead with more of him. Again, that's why the devotional book is powerful because it, if you need help with this, it just helps you, you know, have the daily prayer theme, a verse, you know, a context of a devo, and the application. You can just do that and take time to pray and read and let your heart be filled with something else. More importantly, be filled with God. And let these things be set aside. And let God come in and move in you. Let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life. So the fast, I want to encourage you to join us. Join us and, 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 and set aside something till January 31st. And, and let God just move in you and, and see what, and then write some prayer requests down. Be specific. And, and, and let God just just go through it. I know all week my kids are asking, what's junk food? What's junk food? I'm, I can't eat junk food. I was like, because I got my kids doing it, you know? And, and, and I got it, and now, you know, really tonight, we gotta get with them, you know, what are you praying about? What are you gonna ask God for? Get specific and let God have a chance to move in you and in me by doing this. This is how God, this is how the Holy Spirit does this. So the fasting helps. On the four areas specifically, that I mentioned is when it comes to our family, our marriage, and, 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 and uh, walking out being single, I wanna encourage you all, this is not magic, this is just steps to take, is consider going to a group here at City Church, starts next month. This big church becomes real small in a group. You can meet people and develop relationships, and you'll find that people are like you. Some of us say, I'm the only one that ever has gone through this. I'm the only one that feels like this. That's in the Bible. Elijah did that. I'm the only one. And God said, no, you're not. There's 7,000 more. Now get up and get out of this cave. That, that's, that's what, but when we're a part of groups, it, help us, it helps us to connect and realize we're unique to our story, and our story is unique to us, but there's other people who maybe have the same story or a similar one, and we, and they, and we understand each other because we're human. And when you get in a group, it doesn't fix your marriage, it doesn't fix your family, it doesn't you know, fix whatever maybe needs if you're walking out being single. It just gives you the support that you need to empty out the ice in your life and to give room for the Holy Spirit to fill the cup. This is what Jesus wants to do. What Jesus wants to do in our lives. I wanna encourage you in your family, in your marriage and all that. I wanna encourage you, forgive each other. Serve each other, and those are quick statements, and there's, by the number of people in this room and online, some, some of you, it's hard to forgive. I'm not trying to be slight or, or quick answered. That's not right. I would say, though, that let God have center stage. Let Jesus have center stage and help navigate the deep wounds, the surface wounds. Let him help you, but see what he can do when you make room in this area of your life. The scripture is the context of how I treat summer. The scripture gives me context of how I treat my kids. The scripture gives me context of how I treat my family. So I, I use the scripture as the foundation and that is the roadmap of what I should be doing. It's not perfect, but I'm using that to help me achieve it, to do the best I can. So I'm letting Jesus have center stage. I'm deferring and I'm letting his word guide me and him become greater and me become less. Consider this for your family, your marriage, walking out, being single, just whatever stage of life you're in, and your relationships. 
coworkers, friends, social media, Republican, Democrat, extended family, that you and I would walk in the, we would make room, good Lord, isn't this an area to put ice in right here? We can just put like a whole bucket load of ice, can't we? But I wanna challenge all of us this year to let the Holy Spirit work on us and that we make room by forgiving other people. You know that one of our greatest connections to the fact of heaven is, is the point that you and I are forgiven of our sin. And, and we're not forgiven because we're good, we're forgiven because of what Jesus did. So what the enemy wants to do is cause you and I to walk in unforgiveness to not unplug our connection, it could, but just our, this smooth connection with God, this pure connection with God that we can enjoy through the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants you and I to not forgive people, hold on to grudges, live in offense, be full of anger, live distrusting in a massive way, and then when that happens, it's kind of like our connection isn't as smooth, it isn't it's just kind of, it's there. It's kind of like being full of ice. The water's in the cup, but it's not filling us up. So in our relationships, one of the main things, and I know people do wrong, and we do wrong, and I get all that, and it's a, and it's a whole series, and we're doing it next month called Yoked Up, come back in February. But anyway, <laughs> hear what I'm saying, that the general consent is that you and I forgive that we let God, he has forgiven us and we didn't deserve it, therefore we choose to forgive our enemies, we choose to forgive our friends, we choose to forgive the people that don't understand us, we forgive not based on if they deserve it, but based on the fact that we are forgiven and we didn't deserve it, so we glorify Christ by forgiving other people and I make room, pouring the ice out for the water of the Holy Spirit to fill me up again. Thought life, mental health, in closing, these last two, mental health. It, you've heard me say it before, average person has th tens of thousands of thoughts every day, been documented over 80% of our thoughts are negative, 94% are repetitive. We have crazy thoughts that go through our head every day. We have God thoughts and we have wrong thoughts. We have evil thoughts. And this year, as we make room for the Holy Spirit to move in our life, we empty the ice out of our life and we let the Holy Spirit fill us over again. Letting him have center stage, we step off. Our thoughts, this is huge, and this is a battle that all of us have to walk out every day of our life and we have to choose every day how we're gonna think and what we're gonna do with our thoughts. And here's my encouragement, the how-to. Talked about the prayer and the fasting, talked about getting to a group, going and moving forward in our relationships. Wanna encourage you after this service, next steps. If you have time, go to next steps today. Next steps is in essence like a membership class. You don't have to become a member, but you can learn about us and we can learn about you and help you find your niche here at City. And Make this a great experience for you. Right after this worship experience, you can go to that, a class called Next Steps in the Next Steps room. Talked about forgiving people and walking in love. And having boundaries, but walking in love. We're talking about mental health. How, how to do that. We, we choose to have the Bible be the foundation of where we take every thought. Please hear me, if you and I do not have the Bible as our foundation, as to the premise of how we're thinking, then we'll build our thought life on money. We'll build it on fame, social media, sex, entertainment, selfishness. We'll build it on whatever. And so if we do that, all the, founda all the thoughts are gonna go back to whatever foundation we're planted on. If we're based on sex, or we're based on money, or we're based on fame, or we're living for social media, or we're living for ourselves, or we're living for what makes us happy all the time, all that, man, folks, we're, we're, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I have to base my, my life on the Word of God. That way, when thoughts come in my head, good, bad, or indifferent, I go to the Scripture, and I use this as the foundation upon which is this right, wrong, or evil? 
And then I choose to believe and think what God says. And so this is a daily battle, and I haven't arrived. And I will do this every day of my life, but I'm, my mental health is based, I am going to the scripture to be the bedrock of how I think about my wife, my kids, myself, other people, how I think about different countries, how I think about my past, present, future, how I think about my purpose, how I think about my every, everything. I, I'm, I, I go back to this, and then I can gauge my thoughts. Well, that's a wrong thought. Nope, get out. That's a good thought. Yes, thank you, Lord. That's an evil thought. No, I come against that. No, the Bible says in its place, and I find what the Bible says, and I replace the evil thought with the God thought from the Scripture. And I want to encourage you, if you and I don't do that, We'll be standing on paper mache, trying to fight mental battles that are lies many times from the devil. But when you and I have the word, when the devil came to Jesus three different times, Jesus said every time, it is written and he quoted a scripture. It is written and he quoted a scripture. It is written and he quoted a scripture. He fought the enemy with the word of God. And when you and I are standing on the word of God, our mental health will have good days and bad days, but we have a firm foundation to stand on, and then we know the parameter of what's God's thoughts, and I can begin to feed myself with God's thoughts. Then, your finances. So, I'm going to let God, the fear of that, the tension of that, even walking with Jesus, for some of us, finances and giving to the church and all that. No, I, I'm, I'm, Lord, take center. I'm making room. Ice, come out. I'm not going to live by what other people tell. I'm going to live by what God says. Holy Spirit, water from heaven, fill my cup, overflowing. Renew my mind. Touch my life. Touch my family. Touch my relationships. And for this message, I mean, I mean, just because it's a hot topic, touch my finances. Well, I don't know if that's right. Now, wait a minute. Do we want God in our marriage? Well, of course. Do we want God in our body for health? Yes. Do we want God in our parenting? Teenage kids, come on, Jesus, take the wheel. Take the whole car and the whole fleet. Want God in our work? Of course. Want God in our protection wherever we go? Yes, we pray all those things. Why wouldn't we want God in our finances? That's hypocritical to say we want God in every other area, but he can't come in this area. No, Lord, Holy Spirit, make room. Take all my life. Let the water of the Spirit of heaven touch every area of my life. Let me glorify you. Let the ice come out. Let the water come in. So God gets the glory. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is what he wants to do. I want to challenge you today in these areas. Marriage, talked about that. Getting to a group, being single, family, group. Talked about your thought life, having the Word of God be the foundation. Take it back, your thoughts back to the Bible. You think about your relationships, forgive people, love people, give to people, walk in love, finances. We have a financial group to help people have financial understanding, have a budget, work on saving, give God tithes and offerings, give the heart to the house. All that's biblical. doesn't mean you're going to be rich. It means God's going to bless you and keep you and guide you day by day, step by step, and he will increase you, the Bible says. All those things is making room for God to move. And when the water of the Holy Spirit touches us, God can do something amazing. How many believe in this today? How many believe that Jesus can do this today? I believe it. And so when we're tempted to fill up with ice, we're tempted to quench, resist the spirit, vex the spirit, grieve the spirit, all that. This year, let's just do this. No, my marriage is to the Lord. Single, my marriage is to the Lord. My family is to the Lord. My relationships, I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna be stuck. I'm gonna do it God's way. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna give that to God too. My thought life, that's a challenge every day, but I'm gonna win the battle. I'm gonna give it to God. My thoughts are gonna be clean. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think God's thoughts. 
and my money. I'm not going to get stuck on that either. I'm going to let God have his way, and I'm going to empty. I'm going to make room and do what God says, and I'm going to have my cup empty so the water of the Holy Spirit can fill it and do what God can only do. How many believe in this today? I believe it. Right now, if you don't mind, please bow your heart and bow your head to heaven. If you don't know Jesus today, receive Jesus. If you're far from God, come back to him. If, if, if you have received Christ and you're far from him, then, then, then make it right today. But if you've never said with your mouth, Jesus, save me, do it today. Come to God and come back to God. And move forward in your faith. Let God have his way. Make room for the Holy Spirit. And you would say, Pastor Dave, I've never received Christ and or I have, but I want to run back to Jesus today. If that's you right now in this room and online, please raise your hand. I want to pray for you to receive Christ today and move forward in your faith today. God bless you today. Good. God bless you today. Good. God bless you today. Excellent. God bless you today. Excellent. Good. God bless you today. Come on, give them a hand as they come to Jesus. That's excellent. It's good. And then you would say, you know, Pastor Dave, I, when I think about my life, I told you one story of quenching the Spirit. I could tell you others about grieving the Spirit, vexing the Spirit, resisting the Holy Spirit. All of us can. And you would say, you know, Pastor Dave, I don't want to quench him. I don't want to resist him. I don't want to vex him. I don't want to grieve him. I want to make room for more of the Holy Spirit to touch my life. Today we focused on four big areas, again, since the pandemic, marriage, family, walking out, being single, finances, thought life, and relationships, kind of in that order. And you would say, I, I want God's help to make room and let the Holy Spirit move in me. In fact, you go ahead and raise your hand. I'm raising my hand. I want that in my life. I want to get my cup emptied in life. Follow me in this prayer and say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours, and I run to you. Please forgive me for anything that's wrong in my life. I turn from that. I say yes to you. I give you all of me. I'm yours. I choose to make room for more of the Holy Spirit. Fill me up, Lord. Touch these areas of my life. Touch every area of my life. I give you all of me. I make room. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give him a great hang up of praise today.